Now let us see the very last example for probabilistic dynamic programming. Up to this point, I think all examples that we have seen so far talks about um, the problem that um, happens all the way until the very end of the stage. Like for the 30 days, for T years, big T, and everything happens until the very end. In this example, you will see that um, there are some problems where we may stop before we reach the very last stage. So that's why this example is very interesting. And to be honest, this is one of my favorite examples because sometimes when I try to park the car, I kind of remember this uh, example. So let's start. Somebody called Robert Blue is trying to find a parking place near his favorite restaurant. He's approaching the restaurant from the west. So this is west and that is east. His goal is to try to park as nearby as possible to the restaurant. So the restaurant is this point zero here. And Robert is nearsighted and cannot see ahead such that he can only see whether the space he is at now is empty. So let's say he is currently in the space. He can only see this particular space whether it is empty or not. He cannot see the next one, uh, the next two in the front and so on. He cannot do that. He can only see the space where he is at now. When Robert arrives at an empty space, he must decide whether to park there or to continue to look for a closer space. However, once he passes a space, he cannot return to it. So let's say he passes this space one. Let's say he is already somewhere here. He cannot say, oh, let me go back to space one because it is closer to the restaurant. He cannot do that in this problem, okay? So imagine this is kind of like a one-way street where you just cannot turn back um, to the previous um, space that you have visited before. Now, Robert estimates that the probability that the space T is empty is PT. If he does not end up with a parking space, it means that he reached the last space and this last space is occupied such that he cannot get any parking space. He is embarrassed and incurs a cost of big M. So M is a very big positive number. If he does park in space T, he incurs a cost of um, the absolute value of T. So if let's say he parks in, he parks at this space here, the cost would be 1 minus t. And if he uh, parks here, let's say the cost would be 2. Similarly, if he parks here, the cost is 2 because we take the absolute value of the t. Now, use the dynamic programming to develop a parking strategy that minimizes his expected cost. As usual, there will be a pause in the video to give you the time to pause the video, of course, and to read this problem carefully before you continue. So as usual, let's start at the very last stage of the problem. So let's assume that somehow Robert has arrived at the very last parking space, which is the stage big T. Now when he arrives at the very last space, there are two possible um, conditions, right? Whether this space is still empty or it is already occupied by somebody else's car. If the parking space big T is already occupied, then the only possible decision for Robert is to leave, right? Because remember, he cannot go back to the previous spaces that he has visited before 
and this last space has been occupied by somebody else so the only possible decision is to leave because he leaves he do he does not get any parking space then there is a cost of big m because he is so very embarrassed that he does not get any parking space so the cost for him is big m in this situation okay however there may be another possible situation which is that if the parking space t is empty in this situation the only um, reasonable decision or the i would say the best decision for robert is to park because if he parks uh, at this parking space the cost is the absolute value of t which is t and it is much better than if he leaves without um, getting any parking space if big t is empty but robert leaves then um, there will be a cost of big m and big m is much 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 bigger than t so that's why if the parking space big t is empty the best decision would be to park the car at the stage big t now let us define the notation fto means the minimum expected cost if robert is at space t and space t is occupied fte is the minimum expected cost if robert is at space t and space t is empty okay so um, based on the previous slide we may say that fto with the t is big t equals big m and then fte equals big t now let's move backward to the stage t the t is small because it indicates all the stages before the stage big t now there are two possibilities at the parking space t same as before maybe the parking space t is already occupied by somebody else's car in this case the only possible decision is to go to the space t plus one such that fto which means the minimum cost if robert is at space t and space t is occupied is that we go to the next um space to the next parking space that's why you see ft plus one and ft plus one however the next space may be empty may also be occupied if it is um, empty then we need to multiply it with the probability that the next space is empty and that is the cost if the next space is occupied as usual we multiply it with the probability that the next space t plus one is occupied or in other words it is not empty that's why you see one minus pt plus one because pp plus 1 is probability that the space t plus 1 is empty 1 minus pp plus 1 means that the probability that the space t plus 1 is not empty again so in this case we see ft plus 1 e ft plus 1 o because the only possible decision is to go to the next space which is space t plus 1 but in the next space there are also two possibilities maybe it is empty maybe it is also occupied so that's why you have to consider both ft plus 1 and ft sorry ft plus 1 e and ft plus 1 o and then because it says if it is empty you need to multiply with the probability here it is say if it is occupied so you multiply it with the probability that is also occupied or not empty now we have talked about the first um, possibility if space t is occupied the second probability is if parking space t is actually empty now if the parking space t is empty 
we may have two possible decisions. Because it is empty, we may take the space and just park there. We may also think, mm, maybe I don't want to take this space. Let me go to find another, maybe closer or something, right? So if the space T is empty, then we have two possible decisions. Take the space or do not take the space. If we take the space, then we will uh, experience the cost of the absolute value of T. And you notice here, in this case, we do not have FT plus one because we do not continue to space T plus one. We stop at the stage T with the cost of absolute value of T. However, if we do not take the space T, it means that we keep going, we move on to the next space. Same as before, the next space has two possibilities, whether it is empty, whether it is occupied. So same as before, that is the minimum expected cost if Robert is at space T plus one and it is empty. We need to multiply it with the probability that space T plus one is empty. And that is the minimum expected cost if Robert is at the space T plus one and it is occupied. Multiply it with the probability that the space T plus one is occupied or not empty. Okay. And um, as usual, if we have two possible decisions to take, we draw this curly bracket here. And in this case, we take the minimum between taking the space here and stop uh, uh, stop at the space T and parking our car there. Or we just think that maybe we will have a better um, cost, a better position by moving on to the next space. Okay, so um, this is how we formulate this um, problem. And then you notice that we do not have the curly brackets between FTO and FTE because whether the space is occupied or empty, it is not our decision. The curly brackets only happens if um, we need to choose between um, the decisions that we can take, right? These are the decisions that you may take in your control. However, whether the space is occupied or the space is empty is not under your control. That's why we, will, we have two separates, FTO and FTE. And we do not, once again, we do not put a curly bracket and we cannot choose which one um, we would like to do. The only curly brackets and the possibilities that we can choose is if the space is empty, then we may choose either to take the space or do not take the space. So finally, after five weeks, congratulations, we have finished all the topics in the dynamic programming, both deterministic and probabilistic, calculating the solutions for the problems that have numbers or formulating the recursions when the problems only have notations. We have also seen the additive and non-additive recursions and we have also seen the problem like this one where the problem has kind of a stopping criterion where the problem just stops here because we just park our car at the space t and it does not continue to stage t plus one okay so that's all for dynamic programming next week we are going to start with a brand new topic which is about transportation transshipment and assignment. So see you on the next one and thank you.